God of Israel, truly our Savior lives, our Redeemer lives, amen, and I just want to say, Hag Sameach, Lashana Tova, Happy New Year, we are officially in the Rosh Hashanah season and time frame, and we are now in the High Holy Days, the 10 days of awe, so I want to talk to you about what to expect in this new Hebrew year, what to expect in this year 5785 and eventually 2025, amen, and uh, my gosh, you know, I just want to say, Praise God for this fresh haircut. It really brings the best out of me, doesn't it? Well, friends, give us some hearts and lights. Shabbat Shalom, Lashana Tova, Hak Sameach, Bam Bam. Come on, let's build up the room. Give me some hearts and likes. Share this broadcast. Tag somebody. Because one of your favorite prophetic voices, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, is here in the house. And I'm here to release the word of God to you. Amen. I'm here to release the word of the Lord to you concerning 5785 and even 2025. So let's keep building up the room because the pro prophetic grace, the anointing of God is here. Amen. And I want to give you some shout outs even as you jump in. Come on, let's continue to build the room in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, I'm so excited about all that God's doing. Let me tell you, friends, it has not been easy. Trust me. I'm in the same boat with you. I'm human just like you. It has not been easy. These days, there's been lots of struggle and warfare and backlash and Judas is being exposed and, you know, all these things. But let me tell you, friends, the Lord's up to so much more good than the enemy is down doing evil. I, wa I want you to remember that. God is up to more good then the devil is down to evil. God is always doing much more good. And that's the good news. That's the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we can expect great things from God. And you know what? You could go to the bank and make a withdrawal today. Amen. You could put money in the bank. You could believe that. Because that is the word of God. Come on. He is not a man that he should lie. But he's the way, the truth, and the lie. Amen. Well, friends, I want to talk to you about 5785 Rosh Hashanah. The new Hebrew year, I am officially publicly prophesying, releasing the word that God has given me for the new Hebrew year. You already know I did a private Zoom webinar on it, and I've released this prophetic word on different platforms a number of times. But this is the first time in full I'm going to prophesy and release the word of the Lord for 5785 and 2025. Amen. We are officially in the new Hebrew year. And of course, Rosh Hashanah means the head of the year. And the Jewish people believe that the head, which means a starting point or the leader, as the head goes, so goes the body. Uh, the Bible says Jesus, Yeshua is the head. So therefore, we, the body of Christ, we follow the head. Amen. And I'm telling you, friends, there's new things that God's about to do. And according to the word of God in Deuteronomy, the Bible says you will be the head and not the tail. You will be the head and not the tail, which means he's going to promote you, elevate you. He's going to lift you up. Praise God. Psalm 23, verse 10. The Bible says, he anoints my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Are you ready for the running over anointing? I'm telling you, spilling over, running over, splashing over, overflow. Come on, he's going to release a fresh anointing on your head. Praise God for leadership, for promotion, for an excellent spirit. Spirit, Hanamadi Kara, bro, the Lord is about to do something supernatural in your life. And if you believe that, say amen. And even as we start off the new year, you can expect new blessings. Because whenever it's a new year, there's a new glory. Whenever it's a new year, there's new blessings, breakthroughs. Whenever it's a new year, there's new expectations. So I want to excite you, encourage you, get your expectation up, get your hope up. Come on, somebody. 5785, come on, somebody. Someone say, I got five on it. Amen. This new year, I'm telling you, we're going to see the hand of God. Because five in the Hebrew stands for the hand of God. It stands for God's hand. I want you to write this. God's hand is over my life. 
and every demonic hand of evil that is stretched out against you will be removed. And I believe this new year, we're going to see every demonic, evil, witchcraft hand that has been done demonically, haughtily, pridefully stretched out against you, it's going to be revoked, reversed, removed. It's going to be exterminated by fire because this is the year where God truly shows who is under the hand of God? Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to live under God's hand. That means favor, promotion, grace, miracles, blessing, breakthrough. That means I'm covered. I want you to comment, I'm covered. That means that you're covered by the hand of sovereignty, the favor of the Lord. Hallelujah. So five in Hebrew stands for the hand of God. So this year, we're going to see divine removals, and we're going to see divine resets, and we're going to see God's hand a favor, excuse me, be released over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're with me today, say amen. Now, before I continue to go deeper into this prophetic word, I'm here in Miami, Florida. And on Monday morning, really Sunday night, I am flying off to Uganda. I'm flying off to Uganda. I need your prayers. I need your love. I'm telling you, friends. Uh, I'm excited. I'm preaching at Pastor Robert Kayanda's church, which is the largest church in Uganda. Several of the other largest churches in Uganda. And we're doing our own miracle evangelistic crusade in the nation of Uganda. And so we're, exper we're expecting mega miracles, a great harvest soul winning anointing so we're going to be there for about a week so i need your prayers and i need your covering amen will you pray with me for the harvest of god will you pray with me that we're going to continue to go from glory to glory i want you to comment the unstoppable anointing there's an unstoppable glory and unstoppable anointing and truly we go from glory to glory level to level faith to faith breakthrough to breakthrough so are you ready for that next level if that's you i want to say amen now, once again, I'm here in Miami, and I'm here actually attending the CAP Conference, which is a conference of apostles and prophets with Apostle Guillermo Maldonado, true general uh, of our generation. And uh, by the grace of God, the Lord is connecting me with the man of God and with, the gen with this general, and our relationship is growing in grace. Amen. And uh, who here knows that even as ministers, as prophets, apostles, we need to be able to go and to receive. It's so important for us anointed people. All right? Do you think you're anointed? Well, if you're anointed, you better learn to sit and listen and not always be the giver, not always be the prophesier. You need to learn to sit and listen and receive as well because that is a form of humility and teachability and that is a form of us actually submitting before God and being one in unity with the body of Christ. Somebody say, preach Dr. Ben. So I'm here with Apostle Gilmo Maldonado at his conference here in Miami. And from here, we're going to take off Monday morning, really Sunday night, to Uganda. Amen. So keep me in your prayers. God is good. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. We're going to see the enemy, uh, you know, flee in 77 different ways. So get ready for breakthrough, recompense, and for revival in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, we are in a very important time. In fact, this is probably the most important time of the year. Why is that? Not just because of the U.S. elections, which we'll get into eventually or later on in a different broadcast, but this is the most important time of the year. Why? Because we are in a season called the Fall Feasts. The Fall Feast is a time where there are literally, what I think three, four feasts that take place in the fall. So, of course, it's a new Hebrew year. So, the, it, whenever it's a new year, there's new glory, new blessing, new expectation, blah, blah, blah. But whenever it's this time of the year, of course, seasonally, we're in the fall time. And so, around this time of the year, there's the fall feast, which is, of course, uh, Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, which is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And then, of course, you got the High Holy Days, which are not really the major feast, but it, it begins to go into Sukkot, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. And eventually around the month of December, typically you have a minor feast called Hanukkah. And why is it important to celebrate these biblical Jewish feasts? Because number one, it's God's timeline. Number two, uh, it's biblical and it's an instruction and a commandment. And number three, Jesus himself 
celebrated these feasts, okay? I want to do what Jesus did, all right? Do you think it's important to do what Jesus, Yeshua did, right? All right, uh, as he is, so are we on this earth. So God is not going to reverse these appointed times, otherwise in Hebrew called the Moedim, the appointed times of God. And I want to declare God has a divine appointment for you. Amen. God has a divine appointment for you. So this is one of my favorite times of the year because we are in a great transition. I want you to comment transition. If you are specifically, you know that something shifted in the spirit. Maybe there's warfare, witchcraft, the levels that have gone up, some attacks, accusations. You're feeling a shift. And even, of course, we're going to come into daylight savings in America very soon. So, of course, fall and dark and night is coming earlier. But you see, around this time of the year, there's a great transition. There's a great shift because we are in a new year. Amen. And how you start determines how you continue. How you start determines how you continue. And I'm telling you, you're going to be the head and not the tail. Even as you're connected to me under the sound of my voice in this prophetic broadcast, under the anointing of God, Rabaka, I declare that you are going to pass through, you're going to cross over, you're going to break through, and you're going to start off this new year with bags of plunder, with miracle signs and wonders. Remember, just like a baby that's being born, when a baby is finally out of the womb, and you see the crowning of the head of the baby, what happens? There's a cry, there's a sound, there's joy, there's relief. Hallelujah. So God is saying, get ready for the crowning of the baby. It's a boy, it's a girl, but for some of you, it's going to be twins. For some of you, it's going to be triplets. For some of you, come on somebody, it's going to be octuplets. Come on somebody, are you ready to bang, bang, to birth? In Jesus' mighty name. So I'm telling you today, by the power of God, that there is a release of the birth and anointing in this new transition, in this new year, in this new season. And the Lord has given me a very clear, specific word. And you can watch the full word on YouTube for on a Zoom webinar. But today I'm going to give you the gist of it. Because God said, this is the year of the hand of God. 5785 2025 is the year of the hand of God. Five in Hebrew stands for the hand of God. Amen. I want you to lift up your hands and declare this prophetically after me. My hands will be blessed. Whatever my hands touch will prosper. These hands are God's instruments. I will see God's hand of favor, provision, anointing, and breakthrough in my life. The devil's hands will be removed. This is a year of God's favor. Remember, people of God, there was a story of... Uh, Manasseh, and there was a story of Ephraim. And of course, Manasseh was the older brother. He was the firstborn, okay? And of course, Manasseh in the Hebrew, it means forget your pain or for, forget the memories of the struggles. Now, Ephraim, the secondborn, the nextborn, Ephraim, stands for the double portion. But what happens, of course, in Jewish Hebrew culture, the firstborn will get the right hand, of blessing. What does the right hand stand for? The right hand, of course, in the Hebrew literal culture, and in most cultures around the world, the right hand stands for the Father's favor, the firstborn blessing, the birthright. It stands for the authority, the inheritance of the family. The left hand is a lesser blessing, or we even know and understand that the left hand could even stand as a curse. What did Jesus say? The ones who are truly his sheep and follow the Father's voice, his voice will enter into the kingdom by the right hand. The one who are stubborn goats, who don't listen, who are proud, who will continue to sin and continue to do the deeds of darkness, you will enter into the gates of hell by the left hand. Right the sheep, left the goats. And we understand and that the right hand of blessing was the father's favor, the father's inheritance, the birthright of the firstborn. Manasseh was born first, then was Ephraim. Manasseh's name in Hebrew stands for forget your struggles or forget your sufferings. 
But Ephraim literally means a double portion blessing. So what happened? As the father brought up the two sons to be prayed by Joseph, uh, or excuse me, I think by Israel, excuse me, in the latter days, in the last days of Israel's life, what happened? He did a switcheroo. He did a crossover. He did a switcheroo, a crossover last minute, and the right hand of blessing was on Ephraim. Bam! I want to declare God's about to do a switcheroo in your life. Okay, what's more important than forgetting your suffering and the pains of the past, it is receiving the double portion. So God is saying, I'm about to switch it up. I'm about to do it suddenly. I'm about to do what people think is not right, but it is just in the eyes of God. Get ready for the hand and the favor of God of double portion. Come on, Ephraim's name means double portion, but he was not rightful fully guaranteed the right hand of blessing. But what happened? He stepped into that place by grace, by grace, come on somebody, instituted by the Holy Spirit, and what was ordained for him became his. I want to speak to you, what is meant to be yours is yours. It will be yours. What is meant to be yours, and it won't look right in the eyes of man. People are going to judge, they're going to hate, they're going to criticize, they're going to come against you. But I'm telling you, the hand of God's favor is over your life. Just a little bit about myself. My, my full name is Benjamin or Benjamin. Now, of course, before Benjamin, his, his birth given name was Ben Oni. Ben in Hebrew means son and Oni means shame. You see, because when Ben Oni, Benjamin was born, that was when his mother, I believe it was Rachel, was dying. And actually Rachel died giving birth to Ben Oni. But the father, hallelujah, the father loved Ben Oni and he loved his wife so much that he said, No, you are not the son of my shame, but you are the son of my right hand, Ben Yamin. Therefore, there was a name change, and Yah, Ben Yamin, Yah means God, and Min means favor, or the right hand. And of course, Ben means son. So there was a switcheroo once again, a new name, a shift, and he changed the future and the destiny of Benjamin. I want to declare right now, some of you, you were born in shame, you started off in sin and wickedness and evil, you started off with the wrong foot, but God's about to turn it around and God, Abba Soto, is about to give you a new name, a new anointing, a new future, a new destiny in Christ Jesus. He says, you see that one? That's my favorite one. You see that one? They were the most hated and the most rejected, but they will be the most used and favored by the glory and the kingdom of God. I want to declare your position is changing. Your name is changing. This is the season where God's going to do it suddenly and all of God's people say amen. We are here in Rosh Hashanah and the Lord said this is the year of five, five, seven, eighty-five, twenty, twenty-five. And of course, five, as I shared earlier, stands for the hand of God. Obviously, five fingers for the hand. This is the year for the hand of God. Now, in Hebrew, five also stands for grace, okay? Now, grace, the very definition of grace is receiving what I don't deserve. Mercy's definition is not receiving what I deserve, but grace's definition is receiving what I don't deserve. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to talk to you, to minister to you. I don't deserve to be a minister. I don't deserve to live the life that I do, but because of grace, I gain, I get what I don't deserve. You see, Grace is a gift, and it's freely given. And I believe this year, God's going to release great grace. This year, 5785, 2025, we're going to see the grace of God manifest in our lives. We don't deserve President Trump, but get ready what's going to happen. We don't deserve, you know, America does not deserve, come on somebody, America does not deserve to continue to be blessed, but there's going to be grace unmerited that we don't deserve. There's going to be gifts being released, things that we don't deserve. And I'm telling you, friends, people are going to hate, people are going to speculate and be skeptical, but we don't deserve it, and we know it's by the hand of grace of God. Amen. You see, there's a verse here, hallelujah, that says, hallelujah, Shabbat, I'm just trying to bring it up here. There's a verse that says, O Zarubabel, 
speak grace, grace to the mountains. In fact, it says shout. I wanted to shout. It says, oh, Zerubbabel, you mountain. Who are you? Shout grace, grace to the mountain. Amen. Let me just pull this verse up here. Amen. Shout grace, grace to the mountain. And if you're with me today, say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. Zechariah 4, 7. Here the word of God says, what are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, my servant? For you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the top stone, capstone, with shouts of grace, grace unto it. Of course, whenever something is repeated as double, that means there's a greater emphasis, there's a greater highlight. It means that God is saying, you better shout that thing. You better declare that thing. Grace, grace to the mountain. This year, we're going to see great grace. Grace, grace. This year, we're going to see undeserving things take place. We're going to see things that we don't deserve, we couldn't buy, we couldn't get, with their own works, with their own gifts, with their own self-righteousness. I don't deserve this. But by the grace of God, there's going to be grace, grace. And guess what? Mountains will be moved. Here the Bible says, Zechariah 4, 7, What are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, shall grace Grace to the mountain. So there's going to be mountains moved this year. I'm telling you, we're going to see a political mountain move, financial mountain move. There's going to be mountains moved in America, in your life, in Israel this year. 5785, 2025, this is the year of grace, grace. This is the year where we're going to see mountains moved. If you believe and receive that, say amen. So I want you to shout grace, grace. This is that year of greater grace, of greater glory. This is that year where the Spirit of God is going to give you, is going to do to you things that we don't deserve. That mountain will become a plain, which literally means it will become nothing. And if you believe then, and if you're with me, I want you to say amen. 5785 stands for the hand of God, number one. Number two, it stands for the grace of God. Number three, hallelujah, of course, five is, or yeah, five, excuse me, it is the Hebrew letter called hey. I want to say hey. Hey, hey. Five is the Hebrew letter of hey, okay? And in the Aleph Bet letter of hey, and what hey stands for, it actually stands for the breath of God. So the number five is grace, it's gifts, and it is also the breath of God. Someone said, ha, ha, ha. Someone say, he, he, he. Someone say, yod, hey, vav, hey. Did you know that even in the beginning as we breathe, we're actually breathing in God's name. We're actually breathing in the creative name of yod, hey, vav, hey. Yod, hey, vav, hey. We're actually breathing in the spirit, the presence of God. So five in Hebrew is the alphabet letter in the Hebrew alphabet, uh, alphabet of hey. And I want to say hey. Now, hey means the breath of God. Now, remember, Abram became the father of nations. But you see, before he got the name change from Abram to Abraham, there was a covenant of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kodesh. So he went from Abram to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah. So this year, your name's going to change, your destiny's going to shift, and the hey, the ha, the yod hey, hav hey, that the breath of God of the creative energy is now going to release covenantal power. I want to say covenant, because the breath of God, the spirit of God stands for covenant. Before Abram, now he became Abraham, which means the covenant, haha, the co bang bang, the covenant of the Father is on his life. So this year, we're going to see covenantal promises manifest and break through. This year, we're going to see God's covenant come to pass. Now, you see, there's going to be fresh breath. Many of you are tired, you're wiped out. All right, you've been slugged back and forth through the mud on your face. What a disgrace. And, 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 and you know, right? But there's going to be fresh breath. There's going to be new life. What is breath? It's life. Okay, there's going to be the Chaim, the Mayim. There's going to be life. There's going to be breath. There's going to be power. There's going to be covenant. Stand for winds of change. Stand for winds of God. Somebody say amen, amen, and amen. Now, 
Hey, which is number five, also stands for hey, behold. It means look. It means behold the Lamb of God who will take away the sons of the world, the sins of the world, excuse me. So hey also means behold or look. It means look, behold. So what that means is this year, there's going to be such a distinction of God's hand upon the right people, the right servants, the right sons of God. How about this year? There's going to be such a distinction where you're going to be like, hey, look at that. Look at God. Look at that sign and wonder. That person is moving as a sign and wonder to this generation, Isaiah 8.18. Are you ready to say, hey, are you ready to say grace, grace? Are you ready to see mountains move? Are you ready for that name change? Are you ready for gifts of grace that we don't deserve? Are you ready to see miracles, signs, and wonders? Are you ready for, hallelujah, the hand of God? Now, your hand will grab things. Like, I'm grabbing this towel because I always sweat whenever I minister and preach because I'm a man. Amen. So, the hand will grab. Are you ready to grab a hold of your destiny? Are you ready to grab a hold of your promise? Are you ready to access? Are you ready to possess? Are you ready to inherit? Are you ready to gain, receive? I'm telling you this year, you're going to own, you're going to receive, gain, possess, and inherit. This year is the year of the hand of God, and you're going to see God's hand released. If you receive that, say amen. The last thing I want to declare prophetically over this broadcast, and if you're enjoying this, just give it a like and a share. Let's keep building up the room. Hezekiah in 2 Kings 20, 2-6. I believe this year we're going to see an extension of grace. An extension of grace. What does that mean? Once again, grace, the very definition, is undeserving, all right? I'm receiving a gift that I'm undeserving of. But I believe this year, 5785, 2025, <coughs> there's going to be an extension of grace. Here, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 2 to 6. I love this story because this is what God is going to do and what he's about to do. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Now, Lord, please remember how I have walked before you with faithfulness and with a whole heart. And you ha and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Mm. And before the prophet Isaiah had gone out of the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Turn back and say to King Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of your David father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add, hear me now, I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and the city out of the hand, out of the hay of the king of Assyria, and I will defend the city. Amen, amen, and amen. Look, Hezekiah was about to die. The word of the Lord came and said, Hezekiah, pack your bags, get your affairs in order, because you're about to die, all right? Your season of being a king, or hear this, your season of being a president is over. And, Isaiah, and Hezekiah went bitterly, and God heard that intercession, that brokenness, that travail, and bam, the prophet turned back. The word of the Lord said, and said, God has heard your prayers, and he's going to add 15 years to your life. This is the year for the extension of God's hand, the extension of life. God's about to add life to President Trump. God's about to add life to America. God is about to add life to you. You thought you were done. You thought you were dead. They decreed that you're finished. They said you're unworthy. You're not fit to be in the ministry, in the work of God. Oh, guess what? My God is about to turn things around. He's about to add life to you. And the Bible says here, amen, in, the, in verse 6, I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you in this city from the hand of Kamala Harris. From the hand of Joe Biden, I will deliver you from the hand of the king of Assyria, from the hand of, de of destruction. I want you to say, God is delivering me and my family from the hand of the enemy. This year, I believe God has heard our prayers. He's going to answer and add life. 
15 is five times three. I want you to clap your hands three times. One, two, three. He's about to add life. He, there's going to be a triple anointing of grace. There's going to be grace, grace. Hallelujah. Even as we're about to step into 2025, 25 is five times five. I want you to clap your hands five times. One, two, three, four, five. There's going to be five times grace coming to your face. There's going to be five times grace. I believe God's going to multiply grace. Come on, somebody. Great grace will be upon you and the church, the body of Christ. Get ready for healing. Get ready for miracles. Get Get ready for deliverance. This is the year where we will see the hand of God. Now, last but not least, I want to quote to you one whole chapter of a psalm. Because this is what God gave me. If you're with me today, say amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Psalm 85. Let's read the whole chapter here. Psalm 85. You showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored Jacob from captivity. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withheld all your fury and you turned from burning your anger. And restore us, O God, of our salvation. And put away your displeasure toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you draw out your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your loving devotion, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He will surely speak peace to his people and his saints. He will not let them return fully. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That his glory may dwell in our land. Loving devotion goes before. And loving devotion and faithfulness have joined together. Faithfulness sprouts from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed provide what is good. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him to prepare the way for steps. Psalm 85 for 57, 85. We're in the new Hebrew year, 5785. The Jewish scholars believe Rosh Hashanah, the new Hebrew year, this time frame. This is when all of creation was created. Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. The Jews believe that according to the Torah, that this time frame is where the heavens and the earth were created. The separation of them, bodies of water, land was created, the creatures of the air, and even Adam, Adam was created. Hear me now. If Adam was created around this time frame, that means that in this time frame, there is a prophetic realm for God to do it again. That means there is a prophetic creative energy for, in a sense, God to create a new you, a new Adam. This is that time frame. This is the place, the moment, where God releases destinies. He seals the deal. And he prophesies the future of your life. And on Yom Kippur, let's go into that. Hallelujah. And on Yom Kippur, Jesus, I feel the fear of God. Rekarabrota. Friday, October 11th. One week from now, from today. The Day of Atonement, the holiest day of the year. That is when the books are closed. The books are closed. And decisions and destinies are now finalized and sealed. And it's decreed from the court of heaven. Kativa, Katima Tova. I pray that good things are written about you in your book of life. I pray that good things are written about you in your destiny scroll. One week from today, my friends, is the end of the 10 days of awe, the 10 days of waiting, the 10 days of being before God in the courts of heaven. And we literally face God on a day of atonement, go beyond the veil. And if God has received us, then we will pass through. And if there's any transgression, trespass, wickedness within us, it will not. Judgment is being released. Justice is being released. 
We're one week away from Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, the holiest day of the year. And some of you might say, what do you mean, Dr. Ben? You know, we, we're in the new covenant. Don't you believe in Jesus? The New Testament, the finished work of the cross. Well, friends, do you not know that the Bible says, get away from me, you wicked doers of iniquity. But Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I gave in your name. I did miracles in your name. I preached and I got soul saved in your name. But Lord, I never knew you. You would, you evildoers of iniquity. I never knew you. Will God know you? Will God see you, recognize you, identify you? Will the Holy Spirit bear witness that you are a true son of God? Or are you a son of perdition? Are you one of his? Are you one of his? Today, my friends, we are in the new Hebrew year and we have crossed over, we're transitioning over. And I want to encourage you because many of you, Raman Diabroko, many of you, you are experiencing, amen, you are experiencing a great shift. Some of you, you are experiencing great warfare. Some of you, hallelujah, are experiencing this turmoil of transition in your life. And I believe that in this season, I believe that in this season, the Lord is going to release great, great breakthrough in this new Hebrew year, in this new season. Friends, I want to bless you. The Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. He's truly going to do a new thing. Truly going to do a new thing. I stand with all of those in the Carolinas, Asheville, Tennessee. Our heart goes with you. We love you. We're praying for you. But get ready for turnaround America. Israel, the nations of the earth. Get ready for turnaround. Hak Sameach, Lashana Tova. Happy New Year. It's going to be a year of the hand of God. I want to say this. The hand of God is over my life. I'm protected, I'm covered, and I'm blessed. If that's you, I want you to say amen. Praise God. Listen, people of God, this is the most important part of the broadcast here today. Listen, friends, I'm going to Africa literally Sunday night, and we are in need of Still 10,000 US dollars. God is good all the time. But I want to encourage you, consider sowing a Rosh Hashanah seed today. If I have blessed you, if this ministry has blessed you in any way, shape or form. If you love that we are a soul winning ministry. We're going to Uganda, we're going to Africa. And we're going to see a great crusade. And we're still in need of 10,000 US dollars. We just did crusades in Mexico. This ministry, we gave about 20 plus thousand dollars to that. And even this crusade is costing us about 25,000 US. But even in your need, will you sow? Even in your situation, will you bless? Because God said he blessed Isaac, even in a time of famine. Now listen, we have commented the ways for you to give. You could go to our link tree. But today, as you are connected with me in this broadcast, I want you to obey God, sow a seed. Let's sow into the harvest for the new year and for Africa. I'm going to Uganda, Africa as in the head of the year. I'll be there during Yom Kippur. Isn't that incredible? But as you sow, I want you to comment breakthrough. I want you to comment breakthrough as you sow. And like I said, we're still in need of funds of 10,000 US for these crusades. And let me tell you friends, it's not easy, but uh, we believe in soul winning. We believe in harvest. And unlike most people, we put our money where our, put our mouth where the money, whatever they're saying. We actually sow and we do the work of God. So friends, as you feel led to sow into Africa, give generously, obey God. Amen. This is the new year. Your old giving habits will not break you into new blessings. But sow and bless the Lord. And I know many of you, you are continual givers and partners, so thank you in advance. But I wanna thank you, all of you, for partnering with God in this kingdom. The most important thing you can do, I don't know about you, but for me, 
I do my best to follow the Lamb wherever He goes, no matter what it costs. But what about you? This is a moment, opportunity for you to partner with souls being saved from the pit of hell in the nation of Uganda. Someone must go. How will they believe if they don't hear? How will they hear if they don't preach? How will they preach if they're not sent? Well, I'm going with Pastor John Bear Sikon, my Mongolian spiritual son. Just going to be two of us. Amen. But Jesus is worthy. He is so worth it. And I want to invite you and I want to give you an opportunity to bless the Lord and sow a seed. Because we're still in need of raising 10,000 U.S. dollars for these crusades in Uganda, Africa. So once again, thank you in advance. It's going to be an incredible Rosh Hashanah, incredible new year. Katima Katima Tova, I pray that good things are written about you in your book of life. Juan Martinez, thank you, bless you. Marilyn, bless you. Jeannie Grigsport, bless you. Tim Kenner, bless you. Chanel, bless you. Cece, bless you. And Ayoma, bless you. Thank you. Thank you all for giving and for sowing. And many times it's the same people over and over again. And God knows and I know. I just want to say I love you and I appreciate you. To all of your freeloaders, I pray that God continues to bless you more. <laughs> Pastor Sharon, bless you. I'm here in Miami. Prophet Alana, bless you. I'm here in Miami. And you know, the freeloaders, you're not just freeloaders, you're... Anyways, I got to do a whole thing on giving. I'm telling you, I got to do a whole thing on giving and, and financial prosperity. But even out of your need, when you sow into someone else's, watch what happens, because that's the kingdom. When one lacks, the other prospers. When the other prospers, the other. It's so that we'll be able to give to one who lacks. Bless you, bless you, Angela, Dr. Angela, thank you, bless you. Friends, Shabbat Shalom. Hak Sameach Lashana Tova. Nothing you do is in vain. And I declare now, on this broadcast, in this new Hebrew year, 5785 and 2025 will be the year of the hand of God over your life. I love you, bless you. Make sure you like, subscribe, you follow. I appreciate you. See you soon.